the Fort Madison Community School District welcomes you to this community engagement process. The school district has been working both internally as well as with guidance of a board appointed community led ad hoc committee. The goals are to understand the facility needs of our district and find a recommended solution for our community's future educational facility needs. This work will be the most successful if the committee is able to hear the voice of the greater community. This video along with others and the panel discussion sessions are a way for the group to ensure the recommendation to the district serves the entire community well. As you can see from the timeline shown here, the district and the ad hoc committee have completed some deep exploration to this point. In late 2019, the existing facilities, including the strategic goals and needs, were assessed by the district's design and construction team. In order to ensure a robust community-led plan came from our efforts, the Board of Education appointed an ad hoc committee to lead this effort on February 20th, 2020. After an eight-month hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, in October of 2020, a board member was assigned as a liaison to the group, and the group began their work. Over the next two months, the ad hoc committee further evaluated the information, reviewed proposed solutions, and have ultimately come to an agreement on a solution they feel best serves the Fort Madison School community. However, before they make any recommendations to the board, they want to vet the plan with the greater community. Over two weeks from January 12th through January 21st, 2021, the ad hoc committee will host four live virtual Q&A panel sessions to gather information and input on the recommendations, as well as answer any questions relative to the current solution. The feedback will be used by the committee to refine the plan as necessary. Following a review of this process at a work session on February 1st, the ad hoc committee plans to make their recommendation to the Board of Education on February 15th. The board can then adopt the plan at the regular board meeting of education meeting on March 15th. This master planning process is broken into three distinct sections, each of which will have a dedicated video. This first video will review where we are now. In this phase, we both define our goals and assess our current conditions and constraints. The second phase, where we want to go, we create our vision for the future by imagining and exploring what is possible. Finally, we, we will explore how do we get there. This third step is when we develop, evaluate, and choose our solution that is found best able to deliver the strategic objectives and vision of the district's future educational environment. This video, titled Where We Are Now, will focus on the first phase of the master planning process. We will define our strategic objectives, assess the current physical condition of our buildings, and discuss other factors that affect how we use and improve our buildings. A baseline consideration when creating a facility master plan is student enrollment. With a population of the Fort Madison area on a steady decline over the past 30 years, that is reflected in the district's school enrollment. Over the last 60 years, Fort Madison has seen an average population decline of 6% each decade. This has resulted in the school district losing approximately 1.5% of total enrollment each year. This slow decline in enrollment is one of the factors that make it important that Fort Madison Community School District takes this opportunity to right-size our facilities while we find a solution for the future-focused educational environment. The district currently has four buildings that support the K-12 student population. Grades 9 through 12 are housed at Fort Madison High School, which was originally built in 1959. Various additions have been constructed over the years, with the most recent occurring in 2004. The building is now roughly 155,000 square feet and houses approximately 590 students. Grades 4 through 8 are housed in the district's newest facility, Fort Madison Middle School, which was constructed in 2012 and is approximately 123,000 square feet, supporting nearly 700 students. Grades K through 3 are housed in the district's two elementary schools. Combined, the two facilities house roughly 530 students. The older of the two elementary schools is Richardson Elementary, which was built in 1918. Various additions have been constructed over the years, with the most recent occurring in 2004. The building is now roughly 37,000 square feet. Last, Lincoln Elementary, which was built in 1936. This building has had just two additions, with its most recent occurring in 1988, leaving the building at roughly 37,000 square feet. Unlike grades K through 12, our current preschool programs are partner programs housed off-site at the YMCA and Carousel Preschools. 
The next item for consideration are the physical needs of the district's buildings. This work was compiled via site investigations made by the district's design and construction team. The assessment includes all items relative to the building, such as electrical, plumbing, and heating and ventilating and air conditioning, roofs, site, and school security. Needs were then summarized for evaluation to allow the district and the planning team to understand where physical needs were and how soon they might need to be corrected. The findings show that there are nearly $26.3 million of total physical needs between the high school, Lincoln, and Richardson Elementary schools. More than half of that sum is work at the district's smallest two buildings, Richardson Elementary and Lincoln Elementary. The remainder of the work identified is at the high school, the largest building in the district, and includes major system replacements. When looking closer on the size of the building, each elementary has needs more than twice those of the high school. Evaluating the physical deficiencies of a school related to systems, finishes, and equipment is really only half of the picture. The district's review also included an educational adequacy assessment. This assessment explores the school's site, safety and security, program support, educational environment, maintainability, as well as the effect that those building systems have on our learners in order to understand and grade how well the building overall works as a school. To complete the portion of the assessment, district administrators and the design team reviewed a 96 question survey to evaluate how well your building functions in very various ways when compared against a future ready facility. These questions included things like, does the school have a single point of entry that is easily observable from the office area and or regularly controlled by staff? Is communication among students enhanced by large space commons or multi-purpose areas? Does the school's library or media center provide appropriate space and environment? Is the design of specialized learning areas compatible with instructional needs? Is the classroom furniture flexible and lend itself to large groups, small groups, or even independent learning? Is the traffic flow of students aided by adequately sized foyers, corridors, and stairways? Or is the overall design of the school aesthetically pleasing, inviting, and appropriate for the age of the students? These result in a functional grade for each building. This comparative score between all of the district's facilities and this score will act as a baseline against which future scenarios will be compared. 90 to 100 is excellent. It meets today's needs as a school and can easily accommodate likely future needs. For reference, a brand new building typically scores in the 95 to 97.5 range. 70 to 90 is satisfactory. It meets today's needs and with some minor investment could accommodate likely future needs. 50 to 70 is borderline. It meets most of today's needs, but will require a major investment to meet future needs. Those buildings in the poor or 30 to 50 range do not meet many of your needs today, a major investment will be needed to continue in service. And a facility that's less than 30 is considered inadequate, should not be used for education. As you can see on this chart, as expected, the middle school is the highest scoring building at 85.9, with the high school functioning satisfactorily at 75.1. In contrast, both elementary schools are clearly in the poor range, where current needs are not being met and major investments are required to keep them in service. When looking at the grades in more detail, you could begin to see that all of the facilities are safe, which is shown by the red bar, but the largest deficiency at the elementary schools and the greatest opportunity for improvement at the high school relates to program support. Now that we have reviewed the overall physical and functional conditions and needs of the district, the last piece is understanding the district's options for funding to remedy these needs. While the most familiar form of funding for facilities improvements is the general obligation bond or GO bond, which requires a voted referendum with 60% approval, we are going to focus on the other sources available, as those are the funds that, if used, could provide improvements to facilities without adding additional tax burden to the taxpayer. These funds include both the voted physical plant and equipment levy, PEPL, that passed in the spring of 2020, and the Secure and Advanced Vision for Education, or SAVE dollars, from sales tax. 
Both of these funding methods allow the district to bond against future revenues from those sources. This allows the district to be able to undertake larger scale projects, similar to taking out a mortgage, and then pay it back over time, knowing that the source of revenue will continue through the lifetime of that bond. Focusing on these two alternative methods, the district can access approximately $8.75 million from the recently voted PEPL, as well as up to $16.5 million in capacity from SAVE. This results in the district being able to perform up to $25.3 million of construction without needing to raise additional taxes. So that's all for the first video, where we are now, and we hope you found it informative. We invite you to continue on to episode two, where we introduce where we want to go and explore what a future-focused educational facility looks like and why they are important. For more information and to gain access to the upcoming community engagement panel sessions, please visit www.fmcsd.org forward slash facility dash planning.